Today, I'm gonna to answer a question that a lot of you ask me, and that is, should you get your real estate license as a real estate investor or wholesaler? Now, I'm not gonna be answering whether you need a license because I've already made a separate video of that, and I'll link it below if you need to know if you need your license or not. But this video is really just talking about should you get your license? And if this is the first time you're on my channel, my name is Justin. I talk a lot about real estate, money, and self-development, and I also just document my journey as a young real estate investor and entrepreneur. But what I'm gonna do today is weigh out the pros and the cons of having your license as an investor and a wholesaler. And I wanted to start with the pros. So what are the positive things about having your license as a real estate investor or wholesaler? Number one, probably the biggest and the most important part of having your license as an investor is having access to the MLS. Now, if you don't know what the MLS is, it's pretty much where all the homes are compiled and sold on the market. So the MLS is like the market where all the realtors go to to look at new listings or active homes and all, all that stuff. It has all the data, that's what the MLS is. And like sites like Zillow and Redfin and Trulia, those sites, that data that are on those sites, they're pulled from the MLS, but the MLS is the original source. So having access to that is extremely beneficial because you get real-time data on everything. As a realtor, you get access to all this data on the MLS. So you get to see all the pending homes, the active homes, and the sold homes in real time. So you pretty much get to see so much information. And honestly, the more information you have at your fingertips, the easier it is to make decisions, especially when you're calculating ARV, which helps when you make your offers. So I would say that's probably the biggest benefit of having your license as an investor or a wholesaler. The second biggest thing, let's be honest, are commissions. When you buy a home on the MLS, typically there's a listing agent and then there's a buyer's agent. So if you're buying the home yourself to flip and you have the listing agent who has the home, you can actually represent yourself as your own buyer's agent and make commission on top of all the profit that you're gonna make on a flip. So that's extremely helpful. And if you're gonna flip it yourself, you can make even more commission if you wanted to list the home yourself. Now, I will say this, even though you do have your license and you can represent yourself to buy and to sell, eventually, if your plan is to scale, I would suggest opting out of that. Like, you don't wanna get in the habit, in my opinion, of representing yourselves on your purchases and your resales because eventually, you'll wanna scale. Mo for the most part, not everyone wants to scale but if you did want to scale if you're always constantly representing yourself on all your flips on the purchases and the resales it's a lot of work like as a realtor it's a lot of work a lot of paper you have to go through and it's up to you to decide okay if you want to do that yourself because it's, it's a lot but that's a huge benefit as far as if you're just starting out it does help to have that extra income coming in from commissions to represent yourself on purchases and the third pro and this is probably the least important pro having your license and so you might disagree but in my opinion, I think having a license gives you some type of credibility. All realtors out there have to agree to a certain code of conduct and a code of ethics. And so if you go through all that effort, you have the dedication, the time commitment, all the work that goes into being a realtor, typically, not all the time, but typically, people see you as a little bit more respected and you're held to a different standard because you are a realtor. Sometimes it does help you build credibility, but I would say this is probably the least important pro to having your license as an investor or wholesaler. And the very first downside I wanna talk about, and I think this is the biggest downside in my opinion, is the very real time and money commitment to having your license. First of all, you gotta pay for stuff. Like you gotta pay for your exam, your prep work, your courses, all that stuff into being a realtor, and I forget what it even costs, but it might be like a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars. It's like, it's in the thousands, I'm pretty sure. So there's a really big time commitment. I was a realtor, I just forgot because it's been so long since I became a realtor. But it's a money commitment, and you're spending a lot of time. Some people out there can just get away with taking tests and just passing, but for me and a lot of people out there, you know, you take your courses, you take your exams, and then you, you just study. You just study for the test, and it's a huge time commitment. And so if you're not willing and ready to put in that time and money commitment in, then that's a huge downside to having a license. And like I said, this is the biggest downside in my opinion. The second downside I wanna talk about, and this one isn't too bad in my opinion, but a lot of investors and sellers would prefer not to work with real estate agents. Now, I don't really know why, but I know a lot of them have been turned off in the past by past experiences with agents. And it's very understandable because a lot of agents out there are horrible agents. Like I would say, 90% of agents out there are bad. That's not a real statistic like that. I didn't, I didn't research that. 
But from my experience speaking to realtors in different areas, whether it was them helping me buy a home or list a home, realtors suck. And so that's a pretty big downside of having your license that a lot of people don't wanna work with you and it's okay. And the third downside I wanna talk about, this is a downside that a lot of people talk about, but I kinda disagree with. Like, and this is about disclosing. A lot of people worry that if they're gonna get their license and they wanna be a real estate investor or a wholesaler, they're now thinking, oh crap, now I have to disclose everything to the seller, I'm never gonna get a deal. And the reality is, if you're doing justice to the seller, you wouldn't have to worry about that anyways. If you're gonna be investing in houses and you're gonna be buying houses at discounts, you wanna make sure that these people have a need to sell quickly and at a discount. Because here's my take on this. I think that we all should be good people. And let's say you're just the investor. If you're talking to any homeowner out there, even if you're just trying to buy houses at a discount so you can make a profit, I think you should always be looking out for the seller's best interest as well. You should be kind of figuring out, do they even need to sell quickly at a discount? Because if I get the sense that they don't need to sell quickly and at a discount, I'll just ask them something like, hey, why don't you just list this with the realtor? Because if I personally work with a homeowner, I wanna know that if they're gonna work with me and sell their house at a discount, that they need to sell and that I'm there and I'm providing my service of being able to close quickly and pay them in cash. That's my service. But if they didn't need that service, I don't wanna be just a shark and not care about them and push that on them. I would just say hey, like, why don't you just list with a realtor? Like, you know, I'm happily able to refer one to you. Just, you know, let me know what you want. But so many investors out there say it's such a horrible idea to get your license for this reason. My opinion is different than a lot of other people's because I think you should always be doing the right thing even if you're just the investor. That's my take. I think that disclosing is a good thing and I don't think that should harm you if you're gonna be doing the right thing anyways. If you're gonna be shady, then yeah, getting a license is gonna make it harder for you, but you shouldn't be shady anyways. So there you have it. Those are the pros and the cons of having your license as a real estate investor and wholesaler. And also, if you're a wholesaler anywhere in the US and you have a deal or a potential deal and you wanna partner on it because you don't really know what to do with it, come to me. I will happily partner on it with you and I'll happily help you out and teach you along the way and make sure you get paid. So just come to me, DM me on Instagram and DM me the word partner and then we can start talking about what to do. And my Instagram handle is just in your wrong and I'll add it right here for you to see. But thanks so much for watching. See you the next one.